Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, I want to go through a very simple capital calculation example. So let's pretend that we are playing a game against some thugs, and they have agreed to pay us $60, and in return, we need to flip a coin. And if the coin lands on heads, I have to pay them $100. Now, if we had to look at the expected payoff, we're getting $60, and then there's a 50% chance that we have to pay out $100. So we can see that I'm actually expected to make $10 per game. However, these are thugs, and if I can't pay, they will break my legs. Also, a whole bunch of thugs want to play the game at the same time. Now, let's say I have a risk appetite of 5%. That means I am prepared to risk my legs getting broken with a 5% chance of that happening. The question now is how much capital do I need to hold for an X amount of thugs so that my return on capital is maximized given this 5% risk limit? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let X be anywhere between one and seven thugs and we're gonna see what is the probability of ruin and how much capital I need to hold and what is gonna be the expected return. And you can see that suddenly it's gone from being a very simple game of flipping a coin and when it comes to capital modeling, there's ruin, there's how much capital to hold, there's expected return. You can see how it can get quite complicated. So that's why we're gonna be doing this very simple example just to go through the various steps and things that we have to see. So what I've done is I've drawn out this table and in the first column, we've just got the bunch of thugs that we're playing against. So we either play against one thug um, or we can play all the way up to seven thugs. And we can see that this is the, the income that we're making. So the 60, 120, 180, all the way up to 420, that is the fact that each thug is playing $60 in order to play the game. And because we're expected to make $10 per game, we can see that if we play against, say, seven thugs, we're going to make $70 as expected profit. And you can see 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. So because this is a profitable game, we actually want to increase it as much as possible. However, we need to be aware of situations where we can get ruined or in our situation, our legs get broken. And we see that in the very first instance, so let's say we agree to play with just one thug and we flip a coin. This means that if the coin um, lands on heads, we have to pay $100 and we can see that we're going to be ruined. Let's actually show the probability of ruin as well. So we can see that there's a 50% chance that I have to pay out $100 and that I am ruined. When we come to the second game, we can see that there's another chance where I get um, ruined and that is when two heads come up with the two coins that we're flipping. And this is a 25% chance because it's 50% heads on the first coin, 50% heads on the second coin. You join the two together and you get 25%. So here I now have a 25% chance of being ruined because it is when both land on heads. If just one lands on heads, and this is the interesting part, then my income is enough to cover the loss. So if there's just one head, um, the income of 120 will be able to cover the loss of that one game. So it's only if both lands on heads, and that's why we've got minus 200. If we come to uh, three thugs, we see that once again, um, I am ruined if, if the, the payout that I have to make is more than 200. And this happens if there's two heads or if there's three heads. So what I'm looking at actually now in these situations is a bit of a cumulative probability of the binomial um, distribution. So with three, hugs, uh, three, three thugs, um, if two or more heads are played, then I am ruined, my income is not enough to cover it, and this has a chance of 50%. And we can keep going, four thugs, it's if there's 300, and this is if I get three or more heads out of the four coins. With five thugs, if I get four um, or more heads, then I'm ruined. Um, this one's actually quite quite interesting in the sense that it has to be more than 400 because of the 60, 60, 60, that actually comes up to a multiple of, well, it's, it's, it's 300, and that's, you know, that means we can actually pay out three, three games. Um, 
So it's only if it's minus 400 that we are ruined, and this happens with an 18.75%. Like I said, I'm using the cumulative probability of the binomial distribution in order to calculate my probabilities of ruin. We can see it for 6 and we can see it for 7. Now the interesting part comes in with, okay, once we know the probability of ruin and the amount that's going to cause us to be ruined, we can calculate the capital that we required and what the percentage of ruin will then be. So we can see that when we're playing against one thug, in order to make up this $100 um, dollars over here, we've got 60, we need to pay another 40. So we need to hold 40 in capital. And if we hold 40 in capital, we're going to see that our chance of ruin is 0%. Why? Because the 60 from the income and the 40 where we're holding in capital is going to be able to handle the worst case scenario of us having to pay $100 when it's heads. Um, we see with the when there's two thugs, we now need to hold $80 uh, with regards to, to capital because we've got 120 which is enough to cover the first loss, but we need another 80 in order to cover the second loss. So essentially we're taking these two amounts, subtracting them together to calculate how much capital we need. Things do start getting a little bit interesting the further down the thugs we go. So if we look at just three thugs, we have the situation where we're getting $180 in and we're going to be ruined if we have to pay $200 or more. dollars. So what we can do is we can hold just say $20 and then we'll have $200 and that'll be able to cover the situation where we get two heads out of three. However, we are still exposed to the situation that three of the coins lands on heads and that has a 12.5% chance of happening. So we can see that if we hold 20 in capital, we can reduce the ruin to 12.5%, which is much better from 50%. And if we hold 120, we can reduce the ruin all the way down to 0%. But let's maybe actually look at expected returns while we do this as well, because what we can see specifically for one and two thugs, our expected return is 25%. We're putting up $40, we're making 10 uh, profit, so 10 divided by 40 is 25. Here, we're making $20, we're putting up 80, once again, um, our expected return is 25%. But look what happens when it's three thugs and we put just $20. Our expected return goes up to 150%. However, it's 12.5% risk that our legs get broken. And remember, our appetite is we want it to be around 5%. So 12.5% is a little bit too high. So the next step that we can go to is having to put in $120 because any other amount that we put between 20 and 120 is still going to have a 12.5% chance of ruin. 120 is the lowest amount of capital that we can put in in order to reduce our ruin a little bit further. And this is just the way the game has been designed. And we can see once we put up 120 and we're expected to get 30, um, our expected return drops to 25% again. But let's now come up to, to four thugs. So once we have four thugs, there's a 31.25% chance of us being ruined because if three or four heads um, land up of our, on our coins, then we are ruined. So if, if we're flipping four, four coins, if three or more lands on heads, then we're ruined because if just one or two, we can use our income and that is going to cover those losses. But where things get interesting is if we add 60 as capital, then we move our total cash holdings up to 300, which means we only get ruined now if there are four heads. So we flip four coins and all four of them have to land on heads. And that is you know, 0 0.5 to the power of four, which is 6.25%. And you can see our expected return is then going to be 40 divided by 60, which is 66.67%. And that's quite cool because what we've done is, I mean, we've almost doubled our expected return and that risk of 6.25% is quite close to our 5% limit. Um, you can see the other thing that we would have to do is add in 160 and that would reduce our, our risk down to 0%, but then our expected return will be back to 25%. If we have say five thugs, uh, we know that we are getting in $300 um, and we're going to be ruined if only of the five coins that we're flipping, four or more have to land on heads. This has got a probability of ruin of 18.75%. So this was actually 
the lowest probability of ruin before we started holding any capital. And the reason for this is that because yeah, 60, 60, 60, 60 makes 300, which is a lowest common denominator or a highest common factor, something to do with math, but you can see how the 300 links up with the 100, 100, 100 and the 60, 60, 60, 60. Anyway, coming back, we can see that if we hold $100 as capital, then what we're doing is we can reduce the probability of ruin of 18.75% down to 3.125%. And that's quite good. That's We see it's 50%, it's so it's double the expected return of all the other ones, and it is below our risk appetite of 5%. The next thing that we would have to do if we would want to reduce ruin even further would be to hold $200, which would bring it down to 0%. However, we then have our expected return coming back down to 25%. And we can see for six and seven thugs, um, what tends to happen is we can hold 40% uh, sorry 40 dollars in capital and that is going to reduce the probability of ruin of 34.375% to 10.93% and that gives a 150% return but 10.93 is quite higher than our risk appetite or we could hold 140 and this is where things also get quite interesting we can reduce the risk down to 1.56% because now it's it's almost you need to roll or you need to flip six coins and all six need to land on heads 0 0.5 to the power of six and you can see that that has a quite a good expected return of 42.85 percent so quite a high return for quite a low risk and then with seven we see that okay what we're doing here is if we hold 80 in capital and we can see 70 divided by 80 is equal to 87.5%. So for 6.25%, we're now getting an expected return of 87.5%, which is the same risk as if we had played with four thugs, but now we're getting a higher expected return. The reason why we're getting high expected returns as we start increasing the amount of thugs that we start playing with is because we can see that the variance is kind of linked to the number of thugs that we're playing against. So that's one of the things to, to keep in, in consideration. And then what we can see here is we can also hold $180 and that will reduce our capital of ruin to 0.78% and we would have an expected return of 38.8%. And where this starts getting interesting is you can start seeing that, okay, the more um, or the higher expected return I want to take on, the more risk I need to expose myself onto. And not only that, but you can also reduce your, your, your probability of ruin by increasing the number of thugs because of the impact it's going to have on the variance. <laughs> so we can see that if we want to absolutely maximize our expected return, we would have to go with 150% and have a, a probability of ruin of 10.93%. Of course, if you're not holding any capital, um, then your return is is infinite because you're not risking any capital, and you you know whatever you earn is is you know you can't calculate your return there. So it might even be worth considering uh, playing five thugs um, and not holding any capital and getting eighteen point seven five percent. You know, taking that chance, or you can say I want one hundred and fifty percent return. I'm going to put forty dollars. I'm going to have a ten point nine three percent chance of getting ruined. Or I'm going to have put 80 in capital, it's going to give me a ruin of 6.25%, and then I'm going to have an expected return of 87.5%. Or you could be saying, hold on, I only want to put up 100 in capital, and what I'll do then is play against five thugs, and this will give me a 3.125% chance um, of ruin, which is below my risk appetite, and it's going to give me a 50% return. So at the end of the day, because we couldn't find one that was exactly at 5%, because this is also one of the things, is because the more return, um, or the more risk we take on, the more return we can get, we don't want to come in too low. We don't want to go, uh, I think there was like a 1.56% or a 0.78%. Uh, we don't want to take those ones on because we've made this, this um, or we've come to this conclusion that we are prepared to take on 5%. So it is a bit of a problem if you're under your risk appetite because it means that you've got room to, to take on more risk, which will allow you to take on more expected return. So that's why we won't necessarily go for the lowest probability of ruin. We need to coincide it with our expected return. Remember, we're trying to minimize ruin and maximize 
return. So these are the two things that you want to consider, which means the final answer would either be five thugs, 100 capital, get a return of 50 and a risk of 3.125%. In this case, we're a little bit under our expected risk, um, or we can go a little bit over our risk and 6.25% is actually it's, it's less of a deviation than 3.125%. And here, what we can do is say that now there's seven thugs, we have 80 capital, this will give us a return of 87.5% with a risk of 6.25%. And what I wanted to basically just show with this video is when we have a very, very simple situation, which is literally, we've got some thugs and we're flipping coins, they're paying us and we're then paying them if it's a heads, we can see how complicated um, this whole capital calculation can become. I mean, it's, once we've done all the maths, it's still not straightforward on what exactly we should do. Like I said, do we play against five thugs or seven thugs? Um, you know, do we hold 100 capital? Do we hold 80 capital? You know, it's, these are things that the, the board of directors will then sit around and, and have to have a vote or have to have a discussion to determine the optimal strategy of the business. But you can now imagine that when we stop going from just flipping coins to investing in sophisticated structured products on this on you know public financial markets and you start going into crazy derivatives and arbitrage and all these other weird and wonderful things, you can see how capital modeling can become very, very confusing and very, very tricky. But at the end of the day, you need to come back to the first principles and understand the relationship between capital, ruin, and uh, return. And hopefully, yeah, that will prepare you because in these exams, it's unlikely that they'll give you a very, very difficult mathematical question around capital modeling, but they will maybe throw in something where they ask you or they'll test you on some of the fundamental first principles. So make sure you have a good grasp of those. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.